Corner, presented by Jennifer. Warriors, Book One, Into the Wild, Chapter Five. Hey, Firepaw, wake up! Greepaw's meows broke into Firepaw's dream. He had been chasing a squirrel up and up into the topmost branches of a tall oak. Training begins at sunrise. Dustpaw and Sandpaw are already up, Greepaw added urgently. Firepaw stretched sleepily, then remembered. Today was his first day of training. He leapt to his paws. His drowsiness evaporated as excitement surged through his veins. Greypaw was giving him a hasty, a hasty wash. Between licks, he meowed, I just spoke to Lionheart. Ravenpaw won't be training with us till his wound is better. He'll probably stay at Spotted Leaf's den for another day or two. Dustpaw and Sandpaw are out hunting today, or on hunting duty. So Lionheart thought you and I could train with him in Tiger Claw this morning. We better hurry, though, he added. They'll be waiting. Greypaw led Firepaw quickly through the grouse entrance of the camp and up the side of the rock-strewn valley. As they climbed over the crest of a ravine, a cool breeze ruffled their fur. Fat white clouds raced across the blue sky overhead. Firepaw felt fierce joy well up inside him as he followed Greypaw down the tree-shaded slopes and into a sandy hollow. Tiger Claw and Lionheart were indeed waiting, sitting a few tail lengths apart on the sun warmed sand. In the future, I expect you both to be punctual, growled Tiger Claw. Don't be too severe, Tiger Claw. It was a busy night last night. I expect they were tired, meowed Lionheart gently. You have not been assigned a mentor, Firepaw, he went on. For now, Tiger Claw and I will share your training. Firepaw nodded enthusiastically, his tail held high, unable to disguise his delight at having two such great warriors as his mentors. Come, growled Meow Tiger Claw impatiently. Today we are going to show you the edge of our edges of our territory, so that you will know where you will be hunting and what boundaries you need to protect. Greypaw, it won't do you any harm to remember yourself to remind yourself of the clan's outer limits. Without another word, Tiger Claw leapt up and bounded out of the sandy hollow. Lionheart nodded to Greypaw and they took off with equal speed. Firepaw scrambled after them, his pads slipping on the soft sand. The trees were thick in this part of the forest, birch and ash trees overshadowed by mighty oaks. The ground was carpeted with crisp dead leaves that rustled beneath their paws. Tiger Claw pursued a paused to spray his scent on a thick clump of ferns. The other cat stopped beside him. There is a two-leg path here, murmured Lionheart. Use your nose, Firepaw. Can you smell anything? Firepaw sniffed. There was the faint scent of a two-leg and a strong smell of a dog familiar to him from his old home. A two-leg walked his dog along here, but they're gone now, he mewed. Good, meowed Lionheart. Do you think it's safe for us to cross? Firepaw sniffed again. The odor was weak and seemed overlaid with fresher forest smells. Yes, he replied. Tiger Claw nodded, and the four cats stalked out of the from beneath the ferns and crossed the sharp stones of the narrow two leg path. The tree beyond trees beyond were pine. They grew tall and straight, row after row. In the e it was easy to walk silently here. The ground was thick with layers of dead needles, which pricked against Firepaw's pads, but felt spongy underneath. There was no undergrowth here to hide in, and Firepaw sensed tension in the other cats as they stalked unprotected between the trunks. <coughs> Two legs put these trees here, meowed Tiger Claw. They cut them down with foul-smelling creatures, which spew enough fume to make a kit go blind. Then they take the fallen trees to the tree cut place that lies near here. Firepaw stopped and listened to, for the roar of the tree eater, but he, which he had heard before. 
The tree cut place will be silent for a few moons more. Until the time of Greenleaf, explained Greypot, noticing his paws. The cats padded on through the pine forest. Two Lake Place lies in that direction, meowed Tiger Claw, flicking his thick tail to one side. No doubt you can smell it, Firepaw. Today, however, we will be heading the other way. Eventually, they reached another Two Lake Path that marked the far edge of the pine forest. They quickly crossed over into the safe bushes of the oak wood beyond, woods beyond, but Firepaw still sensed anxiety in the other cats. We're approaching River Clan territory, whispered Greypaw. The stunning rocks are over there. He pointed with his soft muzzle to a treeless mound of boulders. Firepaw felt his fur stand on edge. This was where Redtail had been slain. Lionheart stopped by a flat gray rock. This is the boundary between Thunder Clan and River, ter river Clan territory. The River Clan cats rule the hunting ground beside the river, he meowed. Breathe deep, Firepaw. The pungent smell of unfamiliar cats hit the roof of Firepaw's mouth. He was surprised how different it smelled from the warm cat's scent of th the ThunderClan cat. And he was also surprised to realize just how familiar and comforting the ThunderClan scent seemed to make him already. That's the smell of the riv of River Clan. Tiger Claw growled beside him. Remember it well. It will be strongest at the boundary, because their warriors will have scent marked the trees along here. With these words, the dark tabby lifted his tail and sprayed his own mark on the flat rock. We'll follow the boundary down this boundary line, as it leads straight to the four trees. Lionheart meowed. He left he set off quickly from the sunning rocks, followed by Tiger Claw Grape by Tiger Claw. Graypaw and Firepaw trotted after them. What are the four trees? Firepaw panted. It's where the territories of all four clans meet, replied Graypaw. There are four great oaks there, as old as the clans. Be quiet, ordered Tigerclaw. Don't forget how close we are to enemy territory. The two apprentices fell silent, and Firepaw considered, con concentrated on walking silently. They crossed a, shadow, a shallow stream, keeping their paw paws dry by leaping from boulder to boulder across the pebbled riverbed. By the time they reached four trees, Firepaw was feeling completely out of breath and his paws ached. He wasn't used to traveling so far and so fast. He was quite relieved when Lionheart and Tiger Paw, Tiger Claw led them out of the thick woods and stopped at the brow of a bush-covered slope. It was sun high now. The clouds had cleared and the wind had dropped. Below, in a dazzling in the dazzling sunlight, stood four enormous oak trees, their dark green crowns reaching almost to the top of the steep slope. As Greypaw told you, yelled Lionheart to Firepaw, this is four trees, where the territories of all four clans meet. Wind Clan governs the high grounds ahead of us, where the sun sets. You won't be able to catch their scent today. The wind is blowing towards them, but you'll learn it soon enough. And Shadow Clan holds power over there in the darkest part of the forest, added Greypaw, flicking his head sideways. The elders say that the coldest winds from the north blow over Shadow Clan cats and chill their hearts. So many clans, Firepaw exclaimed. And so well organized, he added to himself, remembering smudge lurid tales of wild cats wreaking terror in the forest. You see now why prey is so precious, meowed Lionheart, why we must fight to protect what little we have. But that seems foolish. Why can't the clans work together and share their hunting grounds instead of fighting each other? Firepaw suggested boldly. A shocked silence greeted his words. Tiger Claw was the first to reply. That is treacherous thinking, Kitty Pet, he snapped. Don't be too fierce, Tiger Claw, warned Lionheart. The ways of the clan are new to this apprentice. He looked at Firepaw. You speak from your heart, young Firepaw. This will make you a strong, stronger warrior one day. Tiger Claw growled, or it'll make him give in to the Kitty Pet weakness right at the moment of attack. Lionheart glanced briefly at Tiger Claw before he continued. The four clans do come together peacefully, in a gathering each moon high. Here, he bent his head towards the four mighty oaks below, is where they meet. The truce lasts as long as the moon is at its fullest. 
then there must be a meeting very soon, Thayapa suggested, remembering how bright the moonlight had been the night before. Indeed there is, answered Lionheart, sounding impressed. Tonight, in fact, the gathering is are very important, because they allow the clans to come together in peace for one night. But you must understand that longer alliances bring more trouble than they're worth. It is our clan's loyalty that makes us strong, Tiger Claw me out in agreement. If you we if you're weakened if you weaken that loyalty, you weaken your chance our chances of survival. Thyrepaw nodded. I understand, he mewed. Come now, meowed Lionheart, standing up. Let's keep moving. They paced along the ridge of the valley where four trees stood. Now they were heading away from the sun as it began to sink in the afternoon sky. They crossed the stream as at a place where it narrowed enough to leap over in just one jump. Firepaw sniffed the air. A new cat scent touched his mouth. His mouth bland, strong and sour. Which clan is that? he asked. Shadow Clan, answered Tiger Claw grimly. We are traveling along their borders. Keep your wits about you, Firepaw. Fresher scents mean that a Shadow Clan patrol is in the area. As Firepaw nodded, he heard a new noise. He stiffened, but the other cats kept their pace, heading straight for the ominous rumbling. What's that? he called, trying to catch up with them. You'll see in a moment, replied Lionheart. Firepaw peered through the trees ahead. They seemed to be getting thinner, letting in broad a broad band of sunlight. Are we at the edge of the woods? he asked. Then he stopped and took a deep breath. The green forest scents were overlaid with other strange dark smells. This time it was not cat scent, but an odor that reminded him of his old two leg home. And the rumbling was getting louder. A careless roar that made the ground tremble and ached in fire paws ears. This is the Thunder Path, meowed Tiger Claw. Firepaw followed as Lionheart led them towards the edge of the forest. Then he sat down and all four cats looked out. Firepaw could see a great path like a river, cutting its way through the forest. The hard gray stone stretched ahead of him so far that the trees on the other side seemed blurred and tiny. Firepaw shuddered at the bitter smell that rose from the path. Next moment, he leapt back, his fur bristling as a gigantic monster roared past. The branches of the trees on either side flapped madly in the wind that chased the speeding monster. Firepaw stared around at the other cats, his eyes wide, unable to speak. He had seen paths like this before near his old Two Lake home, but never this wide, nor with monsters so swift and fierce. Scared me too the first time, remarked Graypaw, but at least it helps to keep Shadow Clan warriors from crossing into our territory. The Thunder Path runs for many paw steps along our border boundary lines. And don't worry, those monsters never seem to leave the Thunder Path. You'll be fine as long as you don't go too near. It's time we return to camp, meowed Lionheart. You have seen all our boundaries now. We'll avoid the snake rocks, even though they are the way around is longer. An untrained apprentice would be easy prey for an adder, and I expect you are getting tired, Firepaw. Firepaw couldn't help feel relieved at the thought of returning to camp. He was His head was spinning with all the new smells and sights, and Lionheart was right. He was tired and hungry. He fell in behind Graypaw as the cats returned, turned away from the thunder path and headed back into the forest. The dewy scent of evening filled the air as Firepaw made his way through the grouse entrance into the Thunder Clan camp. Fresh Kill was waiting for them. Firepaw and Graypaw took their share from the pile that laid in the shady part of the clearing and carried it to the tree stump in outside their quarters. Dustpaw and Stamppaw were already there, munching hungrily. Hi there, kitty pet, meowed Dustpaw, narrowing his eyes scornfully at Firepaw. Enjoy the food we caught for you. Who knows, you might even learn to catch your own one day, sneered Stamppaw. 
Are you two still on hunting duty? Asked Grapehaw in innocently. Never mind. We've been patrolling the territory borders. You'll be glad to know all is safe. I'm sure the other clans were terrified when they smelled you two coming, yelled Dustpaw. They didn't even dare show their faces, Grapehaw retorted Grapehaw, unable to hide his anger. Well, we'll ask them tonight when we see them at the gather at the clan gathering, Mead Sampa. Are you going? Firepaw blurted out, impressed in spite of the apprentice's hostility. Of course, replied Dustpaw lawfully. It is a great honor, you know. But don't worry, we'll tell you all about it in the morning. Graypaw ignored Dustpaw's gloating and started eating his fresh cow. Firepaw was hungry too, and crouched down to eat. He couldn't help feel a twinge of envy that Dustpaw and Sampaw were actually going to meet the other clan tonight. A loud call from Blue Star made Firepaw look up. He watched several of the clan warriors and elders gather in the clearing. It was time for the, gather for the clan party to leave for the gathering. Dustpaw and Sampaw leapt to their feet and trotted off to join the other cats. Bye, you two, called Sampaw over her shoulder. Have a nice, quiet evening. As the assembled cats stalked out of the camp entrance in single file, the assembled cats stalked out of the camp entrance in single file, with Blue Star at the head. Her fur glowed like silver in the moonlight, and she looked calm and confident as she led her clan to the brief truce between old enemies. Have you ever been to a gathering? Firepaw asked Graypaw wistfully. Not yet, Graypaw replied, crunching loud, loudly on a mouse bone. But it won't be long now. Just you wait. All apprentices get to go at some time. The two apprentices ate the rest of their meal in silence. When they had finished, Graypaw wandered over to Firepaw and began grooming his head. Together they washed, sharing tongues as Firepaw had seen the other cats do when he first arrived. Then, tired after the long trek, they pushed their way into the den, into their den. They settled down into their nests and quickly fell asleep. The following morning, Graypaw and Firepaw arrived early at the Sandy Hollow. They had crept out before Sandpaw and Dustpaw woke. Firepaw had been eager to hear about the gathering, but Graypaw had dragged him away. You'll hear about it later if I know those two, he had mewed. It promised to be another warm day, and this time Ravenpaw came to join them. Thanks to Spotted Leaf, his wounds was healing well. Graypaw played around, scooping leaves into the air and leaping after them. Firepaw watched, his tail twitching with amusement. Ravenpaw sat quietly on one side of the hollow, looking tense and unhappy. Cheer up, Ravenpaw, called Graypaw. I, don't, I know you don't like training, but you're not usually this miserable. The scent of Lionheart and Tiger Claw warned the apprentices of their approach, and Ravenpaw mewed hastily. I suppose I'm just worried about my shoulder getting hurt again. At that moment, Tiger Claw emerged from the bushes, closely followed by Lionheart. Warriors should suffer their pain silently, growled Tiger Claw. He looked at Ravenpaw straight in the eye. You need to learn to hold your tongue. Ravenpaw flinched and dropped his eyes to the ground. Tiger Claw's a bit grumpy today, Graypaw whispered into Firepaw's ears. Lionheart glanced at his apprentice sternly and announced, Today we are going to practice stalking. Now, there is a big difference between creeping up on a rabbit and creeping up on a mouse. Can you tell me why? Firepaw had no idea, and Ravenpaw seemed to have taken Tigerclaw's comment to heart and was holding his tongue. Come on, snorted Tigerclaw impatiently. It was Graypaw who answered, because a rabbit will smell you before he sees you, but a mouse will feel your paw steps through the ground before he even smells you. Ex exactly, Graypaw. So what must you bear in mind when hunting mice? Step lightly, Firepaw suggested. Lionheart looked approvingly at him. Quite right, Firepaw. You must take all your weight into your haunches so your paws make no impact on the forest. Let's try it. Firepaw watched as Graypaw and Ravenpaw immediately dropped into stocking crouches. Nicely done, Graypaw, Lion meowed Lionheart as the two apprentices began to move forward stealthily. Keep your rear down, Ravenpaw. You look like a duck, spat Tigerclaw. Now you try it, Firepaw. 
Firepaw crouched down and began to creep across the forest floor. He felt himself fall instinctively into the right position, and as he stepped forward as silently and lightly as he could, he felt a glow of pride that his muscles responded smoothly. Well, it's obvious you know nothing but softness, scrubbed Tiger Claw. You stalk like a lumbering kitty pet. Do you think dinner is going to come and lie down in your food dish and wait to be eaten? Firepaw sat up quickly as Tiger Claw spoke, a little taken aback by his harsh words. He listened carefully to the warrior, determined to get everything right. His pace and forward movement will come later, but his crouch is perfectly balanced, Lionpaw pointed Lionheart pointed out mildly. Which is better than Ravenpaws, I suppose, complained Tiger Claw. He cast a scornful look at the black cat. Even after two moons of training, you're still putting all your weight on your left side. Ravenpaw looked even more dejected, and Firepaw couldn't stop himself from blurting out, He's injured. His injury is bothering him. That's all. Tiger Claw whipped his head around and glared at Firepaw. Injuries are a fact of life. He should be able to adapt. Even you, Firepaw, have learned something this morning. If Ravenpaw picks up things as quickly as you, he'll be a credit to me for in instead of embarrassment. Imagine being shown up by a kitty pet. He spat angrily at his apprentice. Firepaw felt his fur prick with discomfort. He couldn't meet Ravenpaw's eyes, so he looked down at his paws. Well, I'm more lopsided than a one-legged badger, meowed Greypaw, breaking off from his careful stalk to stagger comically across the clearing. I think I'll have to settle for hunting stupid mice. They won't stand a chance. Shall I just wander up to them and sit on them till they surrender? Congratulations, young Greypaw. This is... Concentrate, young Greypaw. This is no time for your jokes, meowed Lionheart sternly. Perhaps you might focus your mind better if you tried out stalking for real. All three apprentices looked up brightly. I want each of you to try and catch a real prey, meowed Tiger Lionheart. Ravenpaw, you look beside the owl tree. Graypaw, there might be something in that big bramble patch over there. And you, Firepaw, follow the rabbit tracks over that rise. You'll find a dry bed in of winter stream. You may find something there. The three apprentices bounded away, even Ravenpaw finding some extra energy for this challenge. With the blood pounding in his ears, Firepaw crept slowly over the rise. Sure enough, a, stum a stream bed cut through the trees ahead of him. In leaf fall, he guessed, it would carry the rain river away from the forest into the greater riv great river that cut through River Clan territory. Now it was dry. Firepaw crept quietly down the bank and crouched on its sandy floor. Every sense fell on fire with tension. Silently, he scanned the empty stream for signs of life. He watched for a tiny movement, any tiny movement. His mouth opened so he could pick up the smallest scent. His ears twisted forward. Then he smelled mouse. He recognized the odor instantly, remembering his first taste the night before. Wild energy surged through him, but he remained motionless, trying desperately to pinpoint the prey. He strained his ears forward until he picked up the rapid pulsing of a tiny mouse heart. Then a flash of brown caught his eye. The creature was scrambling through the long grass that draped the edge of the stream. Firepaw shifted closer remembering to keep his weight on his haunches until he was within striking distance. Then he pushed back hard on his hind paws and sprang, kicking up sand as he rose. The mouse raced away, but Firepaw was quicker. He scooped it into the air with one paw and threw it onto the sandy stream bed and lunged on top of it. He killed it quickly with one sharp bite. Firepaw carefully lifted the warm body between his teeth and returned with its tail held high to the hollow where Tigerclaw and Lionheart waited. He made his first kill. He was a true ThunderClan apprentice now.